Now that we have basic templating working, we want to add a universal header and footer that will be used on every HTML page. And then we want to modify our get template helpers so that they pull in those universal header and footers and wrap them around every HTML template that gets called. So the first thing we want to do is create a couple more templates. This time we're going to call them underscore footer and underscore header dot HTML, but they're going to be living in this same templates directory. So I'm going to call touch templates underscore footer dot HTML and touch templates underscore header dot HTML. So I'm going to open up the header and begin composing this first. As I mentioned in a previous lecture, since this course is not about front end HTML or CSS or front end JavaScript or DOM manipulation or anything like that, I'm going to breeze very quickly through composing these templates and all of this front end stuff that it doesn't directly have to do with serving files or writing handlers in Node. And so if you want to look at these files in more detail, feel free to browse the GitHub. Otherwise, don't worry about memorizing or keeping up with everything that we're saying here. When we originally wrote this index hello world, we wrote the opening and closing HTML tags, the head tags, and the body tags all here. But we want to be able to modify this index.html so that the only thing it needs is just the content that makes it different from every other page, namely an H1 with hello world in it. So I'm going to modify index.html to only have an H1. And then we're going to build out these header and footers so that they provide the rest of the tags that used to be there. They're just going to do it in a more complex or fully featured way. So within the header, I'm going to have the opening HTML tag followed by an opening head tag. I'm also going to include the closing head tag, an opening body tag, and then what I'm calling a page wrapper. Now you'll notice that I'm writing these comments as HTML comments, not as JavaScript comments. And so I'm using the HTML comment syntax instead of the one that we were doing earlier. So this is going to be the page wrapper, and it's just going to be a div called class wrapper. That's going to be opened within the header but as you'll see, there are that and another element called content that don't get closed within the header. They will get closed within the footer. So within the wrapper, one other thing that's going to be included on every page is a header. But by header, I don't mean this whole file. I mean the head of the document, the top of the HTML page that the browser users are going to see. So I'm going to say that the header is going here, and that is going to be a div with the class header. And I'll fill that in in details in a moment. This one actually is going to get closed because the header lives entirely within the header.html. And then, as I mentioned, we're going to have the page specific content prepended with the opening tag called content. So I'm going to create a div, call it class content, but I'm not going to close it. Before we fill in the header and the rest of the head, let's go to the footer so that we can close these tags so that it's not so hard to keep track of them later on. Within the footer, I'm going to close that content div. Then I'm going to actually have a footer, an HTML footer built in here. So I'm going to create a div with a class called footer that itself is going to be closed. Then I'm going to have another closing div here. And to look back at what we're doing, we're actually closing the page wrapper. Then I'm going to have a closing body tag since the body was still open and finally a closing HTML tag. To make this all seem a little prettier, I'm just going to space these out a little bit. So the body is indented, the closing div is indented from the body, 
the footer is indented from that closing div, and then the content closure is indented as well. I can get rid of these empty spaces here, but I am going to fill in some content in the footer now while we're here, and that's just going to be a div with a class called copyright, and we're going to say that the copyright equals global dot year created followed by global dot company name and then a pipe and all rights reserved with a closing div. Now you might be saying, what on earth is global.year created? What is global.company name? And what is this syntax that you're using? Right now, we are inserting a variable into this template. All of our templates, and these are no exception, are going to accept variables that are global or specific to the page that's being rendered. These two variables, year created and company name, are just two of the globals that we're going to make available. Where do these come from? Well, as you know, before these templates are ever presented to a browser, they need to go through helper functions such as get template. So in a moment, after we finish writing this header and footer, we're going to modify those helpers so that they can dynamically insert any globals that we want or any of the data specific to the page. So if you were wondering in the header how we're going to get page specific titles, meta descriptions, all of that in the head, if this is a universal header, that is how. The helpers are going to be able to pull in page specific metadata and global metadata about the app. The global metadata we're using here is the year that this application was created and the company name that created the application so that we can render a copyright correctly. Back to the header, we have a whole bunch to fill in here. Within the head, we want to have some general purpose settings at the top. The first is the char set. So we're gonna say that meta char set equals UTF-8. Then we're gonna say that the content language is English, so en-us, meta, HTTP, equiv, equals content language, content equals en-us. Now we want to include a base tag. This is not an HTML tag that very many people use, but I am quite fond of it. It allows all of your links to be relative to a base directory that you specify. So I'm going to say that the base directory that every HTML link on the page should be relative to is going to be global.baseURL. And this is another use of these global variables that will be inserted when these pages are getting rendered. Now we want to put in some meta tags. As you can expect, these meta tags are going to be mostly placeholder variables that will be modified on the fly. So I'm gonna include the title tag, and that's going to be a variable called head.title, followed by a pipe, and then global.appName. So for example, we're going to want this title to say, you know, homepage, pipe, and then the name of the app. Now we want a meta description. So we're gonna say meta name equals description, but the content of the description is going to be a variable, head.description. Since we are doing this string in interpolation or this find replace, if you will, on our own, we don't need to worry about placing variables within quotes or outside of quotes. It doesn't matter. We'll be able to find it ourselves. Now we want to list the static assets. The first is a favicon, which most browsers will pull in from the right place automatically, but we might as well tell them where it lives. The type is image slash x icon, rel is icon, and href is favicon.ico. 
we don't need to put a slash there because even the href within the favicon link tag is going to be relative to the base directory. We're going to have a script tag whose type is going to be text slash JavaScript. Char set is going to equal UTF-8 and whose source is going to be a public route that we didn't define yet. It's going to be called public slash app.js. In a future lecture, we'll go about rendering static assets like app.js on a public path. But for now, we're just going to put that reference in there on the assumption that it will exist at some point. And then we want to close that script tag. Now we want to reference a style sheet. So we're going to say link rel equals style sheet. Type equals text slash CSS and href equals public slash app.css. And then this can be a self-closed link. Then we'll have the head closed and we can move on to the body. The body tag itself is something that we're going to change. We're going to add a optional class to it, which has the variable body.class. This will be really important for enforcing page specific styles in our CSS. Now within the header, we actually want to add a logo and then a menu. We're going to say that the logo goes here. The logo is going to be a link back to the index page with a base URL in effect. In order to reference the index page, we still do want a slash. Then we're going to add the class called logo. Now we want to add a menu. So I'm going to say the navigation goes here. The menu is going to be an unordered list with a class of menu. Each link in the menu is going to be a list item that has an A tag inside. So I'm going to write a blank one here and then copy it down six times. One two, three, four, five, six. This top link is going to be to home. So it'll just be a slash. The next one is going to be to sign up. And for now, I'll just put a slash in for that one and all the others. We'll fill them out later. After sign up, we want login, then dashboard, then account settings, then log out. Now you might be saying it'd be very strange to visit a website, look in the menu and see this sign up button, the login button, the log out button, and then dashboard and settings that you really should only be able to get to if you are logged in. So we are going to add classes to some of these menu items saying that they should really only be visible if the user is logged out, such as the login button, or they should only be visible if the user is logged in, such as the log out button. So sign up and log in are both going to have a class called logged out, because only logged out people should be able to see this thing. Now dashboard account settings and log out should have a class called logged in. Because only logged in people should be able to see any of those links. The home button should always be visible to everybody, so it doesn't need a class. Now we have the HTML for the universal header, the universal footer, and our modified index. Let's go to our helpers file now. Let's add some new logic that's going to let us wrap these new header and footer around any existing template to create a full page out of it. And while we're here, let's also add some logic that's going to let us perform string interpolation, or in other words, that variable replacement for any of the variables that we have put inside of our templates 
whether inside of page templates, inside of the header, or inside the footer. So we're going to modify our get template function. We're also going to add some new functions for adding the universal templates and doing string interpolation. Why don't we start with the string interpolation? We want to take a given string and a data object and find slash replace all the keys within it. So this helper is going to be called helpers dot interpolate and it's going to take a string and an object with keys and values. The first thing it's going to need to do is sanity check both of these things. So we're going to say that string type of string equals string and it has a length otherwise default to an empty string the data object is going to be type of data equals object and it's not null use the data object or default to an empty object. Now that we've created these defaults, we need to add the template globals to the data object, prepending their key name with global. So what this means is in our configuration file, we're going to add a bunch of globals that can be used anywhere in any templates. For example, if you remember in the footer, we have a global called year created and another one called company name. But notice how they are referenced by saying global.year created. That is because here in the interpolation function, we are going to grab those globals out of our config file, add them to the data object that is going to be page specific or template specific, add the globals in, and then we'll go about performing the find and replace. So we are just making sure that anytime finding and replacing is happening, we are inserting the globals so that they are available for finding and replacing on any template at any time. So we want to say that for var key name in config dot template globals. So we're just going to loop through it. If config template globals has own property key name, then we're going to add it to the data object. So we're going to say global dot key name equals config template globals key name. Because to clarify, we're not adding a global object to the data and then adding these keys as sub keys on that object. We're actually adding top level keys called global dot something. So now that we've added those in for each key in the data object, we want to insert its value into the string at the corresponding placeholder. So what we're going to do is cycle through all the keys in the data object and then find and replace those key names in the template string. So we are going to say for var key in data, remember data now holds all the globals as well as whatever it started with we're going to say if data has own property key and type of data key equals string then do the replacement so we're going to get the value and that's what's going to be inserted. What we need to find is the part in the template where that key is referenced. And within the templates, 
we reference these keys by just saying the key name and wrapping it in brackets. So we are going to look for a string that looks like that. So it's going to be an opening bracket plus the key name and then a closing bracket. So you can see what we're doing here. We're finding that and we're replacing it with that. So now we're saying that the string equals string replace find replace. Lastly, we need to return the new string now that all the find replacing, the interpolation has taken place. Now that we have this general function that's useful for finding and replacing data, we want to modify this helpers.getTemplate function to actually use this interpolation function anytime that it is returning a template to a user who's requesting it. So we are actually going to modify get template to not just take in a template name anymore, but to take in template name and a data object and then the callback. And that will allow this function to pass the data object to the interpolation function so that the find replacing can happen. So we already sanity checking the template name. Now we want to sanity check the data object. And we're gonna do that the same way that we did down here. Now, instead of calling back the string that we pulled from the template, we now want to do the interpolation on the string before returning it. So we want to say that the final string is going to equal helpers interpolate string data. So take the string of this template we just pulled out and insert find replace any of the data there. Now we want to call back false and this final string. So that's all the variable finding and replacing that we need, but we still don't have an easy way to wrap these templates that we'll be getting with the header and footer that we created. So we're going to add a new function for that. And this function is going to let us add the universal header and footer to a string and pass the provided data object to the header and footer for interpolation. So we are going to say that helpers .add universal templates is a function. It takes in a string, data object, and a callback. And we want a sanity check the first two parameters the same way we've been doing it. Now we want to get the header and then we're going to get the footer and then we're going to wrap those around the string that we're starting with. So we're going to call helpers dot get template. We're going to tell it that we need header and we're going to provide it the data object that we're starting with and it's gonna pass us back an error or the new header string. So if there is no error and we got the header string, we'll continue. Otherwise, we're gonna call back the error that we could not find the header template. If everything's fine, we need to get the footer. So we are gonna call helpers, get template, tell it we need the footer, pass it the data object, and expect back an error and a footer string. And if there's no error and there is a footer string, we're gonna continue. Otherwise, we're gonna call back, could not find the footer template. Now, we need to add these three strings together. So we're gonna say that the full string, all the HTML is going to equal header string plus the string we started with plus the footer string. Then we're going to call back no error and the full string. So the way that this function will get used is our handlers will get the template they want, then they'll pass that new string to this helper 
to have that string wrapped with the header and footer templates. Now that that exists, we should go to our config object and add in the globals that we will need in order for the interpolation to work. So down below Twilio, I'm going to add a new key called template globals. That's going to be an object that has a few keys. It's going to have app name. We're just going to call this app uptime checker. It's going to have a company name and it'll be not a real company incorporated. Year created. That'll be 2018. And then a base URL. And in staging mode, that base URL is going to be http colon slash slash localhost, then whatever port we're using up here, in our case, 3000 and then a slash. We can copy the template globals down to production as well. You just want to fill in the base URL to be whatever your production URL is. For us, it'll be localhost 5000. Now let's go back to our handlers, look at that index handler that we wrote and modify it to rather than just returning the contents of the index.html template, actually get the index.html wrapped with the new header and footer. So we still want to reject any method that isn't get, but now we want to start preparing some data for that string interpolation that's going to happen. So prepare data for interpolation. Remember that the header is expecting some page specific content to be passed to it. So the global.base URL is going to come from the config, but the title and the description, as well as the body class and some others, whatever we define within index.html, are going to need to come page specifically. So that will need to be defined in the handler. So for us, we're just going to use a few examples and say var template data is an object. Head dot title is this is the title. Head dot description is this is the meta description. Body title is going to equal hello templated world and body class is going to equal index. So let's go use this new body title that we just added. We're going to go to index.html and instead of saying hello world, let's just say body title. Just as we used this new variable, we can use any variables that we define. If we define foo in template data, it'll be made available as foo here. By convention, and just to keep things organized, I am doing dot notation so that we can keep track of which things are data that should be inserted somewhere in the head and which things are going to be inserted somewhere in the body. But it doesn't really matter. You can name them anything that you want. Now that we've named them, we want to read the template as a string, as we have already done. So we're going to call helpers.getTemplateIndex. But then, instead of just calling back the string, we want to call that add universal templates function to add the header and footer. So we're going to call helpers add universal templates. We're going to pass it this string that we just got from the get template function. And then we're going to pass it all this template data that we just created. And remember, our interpolation function is going to be smart enough to add in the globals automatically. So we don't need to worry about redefining the globals from the config object 
back here, they're going to be inserted and always available in any of these templates. So this template could use one of the global variables if it wanted to. So after we pass in the template data, we want to expect back an error or the new full string of the whole page. So then if there's no error and there is a string, we want to return that page as HTML. And so we'll just call back 200 the string and HTML. Otherwise, we want to call back the same error as below, 500 undefined HTML. So let's start our app back up and see if these headers and footers are being added and all the variable replacement is happening. So I'm gonna make you get to the base URL. This is what we saw last time. This time through an error, this callback is not a function in the helpers file. So I'm gonna to go to the line that they're talking about 130. And as you can see, we are getting tripped up right now because the get template function is being called in the old way. It's being called with template name callback, where we've actually now inserted this data object. So we need to make sure that anyone who's calling get template is actually calling template name data and then callback. So back in our handler, when we we're calling get template to get the index from before, we need to make sure that we are passing in template data there as well, and then stating the callback. So let's try that again. I'll send the request. And there we go. You can see the source that is coming back here. We have a head. You can see that this is the title and then the app name is getting inserted dynamically using that find replace. There's all those static assets that don't exist yet. Then as we scroll down, we can see that the footer has 2018, not a real company Inc. And that the body has hello templated world. So all the find replace is happening. And also this whole header and this whole footer are being wrapped around the template content, the template is only this one line, hello templated world. So let's go ahead and view it in the browser. And here we are, localhost 3000. We have these links, we have hello templated world, and then we have a footer. Obviously, we're gonna make this look a bit better as time goes on, but we know that the string interpolation and general use of templates is working fine now. So now we can move on to the next lecture.